conceptual Jay stuff. Sounded better than Jay. Jay. Things people talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Uh, Dr. Rick Wallace uh, dropping in on you. Uh, this would normally be the time that I would be doing the morning motivation segment of what I do. Uh, but uh, with the untimely uh, passing of Kevin Samuels and the responses that I have seen, uh, I felt the need to make this morning about observing and identifying something that's deep and darkly embedded in the black reality that really truly troubles me. And so that those who may not know me or who haven't followed me, uh, definitely not uh, the person with the type of exposure that Kevin Samuels had, uh, though there were a couple of times uh, we bumped heads. Um, the context is I had a major problem with Kevin Samuel's approach and delivery. While I understood it was the shock value that he had that gave him his audience, it also uh, was entertaining and uh, he wasn't really approaching what he did from the same place that I approach it. My thing is about mental health and wellness and wholeness. His is about advice on an edgy, edgy thing, uh, it didn't set well with me. So everything I'm saying is saying it from a person that up until this point saw a lot of what he said and could see the truth in it, but I didn't feel like it was really <clears throat> something that was going to be uh, in any way a unifying force between the upheaval, but uh, in the upheaval between black women and black men. Uh, I thought it was a voice that black men had been demanding because there are plenty of uh, channels and experts talking about how horrible black men are. And uh, he did it uh, again. I had my opinion about it. Uh, and my opinion was simple. I make a living out of helping people be better. And one of the first things that you have to do in helping a person be better is being honest with them about where they really are versus where they think they are. So I do that for a living, but I've always done it in a way not to harm the self-esteem, self-image, the psyche of a person, uh, not to do it in a degrading way, not to do it in a way that is could be considered disrespectful or degrading, to do it in a way that was honest but respectful. And I made a living doing it. So I knew it could be done. And so that was my biggest thing is there's a way to say it. And so for that, I mean, I, I just didn't like it. And I have this thing about how you treat a woman and it has nothing to do with the woman. And if you know me and you know where I'm at right now, what I'm going through, you know exactly what I'm talking about there. A woman is going to do what she's doing. Uh, good, bad, indifferent. She's going to be her. But my character is based on how I feel and move as a man and I don't, no, no part of my manhood needs to break a woman down to be, to be full. So even when a woman isn't doing what she's supposed to, that's only so far I'm going to go and how I'm dressing. Um, my, my goal is I'll be honest with her about it. Uh, I'll talk with her about it. If there's something that uh, I can do to help, I will, but I'm not going to tear her down. And so that was a difference with that. And then there were others like, Dr. T. Hassan Johnson and Dr. Uh, Tommy J. Curry, who were advocating for black men. Dr. Jeremy, Tommy J. Curry, one of the most respected academicians um, internationally. I think he's actually left Texas A&M and is headed over to the UK. Uh, but he wrote The Man Not. And so there were these men out there that were telling the story about what's going on with black manhood. And I was sort of seen as the guy that was championing more for black women than I was for black men, which wasn't the truth. But 
I hold black men to a certain level of accountability. I'm not real big on giving or accepting excuses. And so I deal with men different. I deal with women the same way I deal with my sons different than I deal with my daughter, but I hold everyone accountable. Uh, but that's not even the thing. You can agree with you can agree with him. You don't agree with him. One of the things that you can say is when we when I was having my differences and I was expressing them again, I'm not on the platform that this dude was on. This dude had to build him something on this. I have no problem with building a platform on something that you feel you're doing and and you whatever because people have a choice. People have a choice to listen. People have a choice to watch. People have a choice of whether or not they want to participate. I never advocated for having him bumped off of YouTube and the other spaces he was on. And matter of fact, I spoke out against it, even though I strongly disagree with his approach. Uh, I believe that uh, we have enough censorship as it is. My problem here today. Wow. Before I forget. Before I forget, don't forget to support the work we're doing here at the Odyssey Project. Um, Black Men Lead, uh, the work we're doing, the Rite of Passage program and all the other stuff. I was supposed to do this at the beginning, uh, but just watching how people are responding to this kind of just really turn, you know, did something to me. But please show your love and support for the work we're doing here at the Odyssey Project with Black Men Lead, Go Restoring Get Us Forgotten Daughters uh, and other uh programs the link in the, is in the description box show some love uh in in that and i'll talk to you about it again when this is over look my concern is and the reason it, i didn't do this yesterday i want to really truly be sure that what i was hearing about his passing was accurate um and i wanted to kind of uh see how this trend in responses were going to go um uh, as a person i did not like him i'll say that but nothing about his passing makes me happy uh he is a black man who has a family uh i'm sure that is devastated right now that's nothing to celebrate uh, the fact that so many people at a time like this can literally get excited. And I guarantee it's some people who were really offended by him. I get it. I was on your side. But I think we as a people have to understand how much our pain has impacted us in our humanity, in our empathy, in our ability to feel. We have become extremely callous, dark, angry, bitter, hateful. Uh, and because we don't have on a collective level, the highest level of fluidity and movement and exposure, that anger, that bitterness, that hatred, that, that, that vitriol that we uh, seem to have at great, great volume is normally turned on each other because we're not in their spaces enough to affect them with our negative energy the way we affect ourselves. You know, I, I, I don't think it's anybody who's followed me that would think, man, I'm going to wake up and Dr. Wallace is going to be doing a video uh, defending Kevin Samuels. And here I am. I, I'm not so much defending Kevin Samuels in a sense of how he did things. I'm defending uh, the fact that he had a right to do it. Uh, you didn't have to agree with it. I didn't. Um, I think that, honestly, there was some truth in a lot of what he said but that was a bunch of BS in it too. That's me. But I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. Uh, I have spent a lot of my time learning to be and do what I do. I'm talking years, decades to evolve into the person I am 
and the professional I am and the expert that I am in the things that I know. And I'm still learning and I still know less than I still know less than I don't know. So I'm never a person that's sitting up thinking I'm always 100 percent right. And so I, I would take time to listen. And there were some things that he was on. But I think the whole value thing he got completely wrong. I think his approach was completely wrong. Now, if you if your primary audience is men who are fed up with women, oh yeah, you did it exactly the way you should have done it. Uh, but if your goal is to actually create spaces where people learn how to enter into relationships that last and that are productive and that are in alignment with one another, then that probably was a better way to do it. With all that being said, this man passed away from, from, from what I'm understanding, he had a card cardiac arrest as a person who has had five heart attacks in the course of seven days and understanding that and how it, uh, I didn't pass and it devastated my family. It was a while before my family got back to things as normal. It's, I'm still not. Every little feeling of flinch now that I would normally ignore gets my attention. And so to see something so devastating, uh, happen. And the first response for many is to celebrate again, uh, my, putting it in context for those who didn't watch the beginning of the video. I was not a supporter. I was not a fan. Uh, I was an adversary. And matter of fact, I only time that I've been attacked more than when I went after Kevin Samuels is when I went after the LGBT community, specifically when I went after the show, uh, the prancing elites or whatever it was that I think was on one of those black networks. Uh, man, they blew up every website I had. They came at me in my personal email. They went crazy. But as far as online, dudes came at me about what I had to say about Kevin Samuels. And what I did is what I normally do. I don't dismiss anybody. I don't sit up and go, well, hey, they, they you know, whatever. I sit back and say, okay, why are they doing it? Well, you got a lot of people who don't feel heard. You got a lot of people who feel a certain way and you got a lot of men out here who feel that they are targeted, but nobody is calling black women on their mess. Um, and if you look at the channels, they actually have an argument. Uh, and, and if anyone has an idea that every problem is the other person's problem, whether you are a black man or a black woman, you're the problem. There's enough culpability to go around. I've been studying this thing for 30 years. And, and there's enough culpability to go around. Black men, we have failed in a number of different areas tremendously. I'll give you a, a, an example. the second leading cause of death for black women between the ages of 50, 15 and 44 is intimate partner homicide. Guess who the predominant uh, partners are? Black men. Uh, that's just one thing. It's a bunch of others. Black women, the commodification of black men, which made the argument that Kevin Samuels made constantly a problem but it's, it's the commodification. See, even, even the commodification of black men gave him a platform because he's considered high value men, men who made a certain amount of money. That's so much more to the value of a man. But when women respond to that idea that money is the end all be all, you find out that, okay, we have a problem. And, and there's so many other things that we can sit up and talk about for days that says there's culpability on both sides and that we should be looking to learn and heal and become better as individuals so that we do listen and understand. And 
that was my that was my point. Anytime one side is sitting around and everything is the other side's fault, then there's no reconciliation. There's no chance for growth. And normally the problem lies within. Anybody that knows me knows that even when I've been wronged, I don't I don't come out throwing stones. I don't come out pointing fingers. I might tell some people I love what happened, but how I feel is of no consequence at that moment because I'm in an emotional state and because I've been through some things. And a lot of people see things through their own reality, reality and through their own experiences. And some people have been hurt. And we're going to have to admit black men, we're going to have to admit that black women in large numbers have been rearing our progeny on their own for quite some time. Black women, you're going to have to admit you chose those men. That something inside of you wasn't right at the time. And you thought it was a good idea to procreate with a man that did not have the capacity to be a father or a husband to you. We both are going to have to admit that we have somehow lost our ways and think that there's actually an economic, a social and a spiritual uh, benefit to procreating and then being separate and trying to rear a, rear a child without both masculine and feminine energy. There is plenty of culpability to go around. And so I'm never going to be on the side of someone who is constantly pointing the finger at the other side. I want to talk about what we all can do to be better. And when I see the celebration when I see the celebration of a person's death in the way that, and, and it's not just, man, well, I'm glad he's gone. You know, it's like nasty. And let me explain something to you. When you meet nasty with nasty, there's no benefit in that. Whenever you've got to come down, look, look, you're emitting energy every day with your thoughts, with your words, with 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 with, with your demeanor, with everything about you. You're emitting energy. This energy can literally be measured measured on a hurt scale. And emotions like anger, bitterness, fear, anxiety, worry, stress, jealousy, any of those are measured at 250 hertz or lower. Things like love, gratitude, empathy, desire to learn, desire to help and serve emits at a 500 hertz or higher. The higher you get, the more you become in tune with the spiritual self and the spiritual uh, source, which you can call God, the almighty, uh, the most high, whatever you want to do. Um, Oh, man, Alfredo D. Strong pointed out something, too, that didn't come to mind now, but I've definitely been paying attention to it. And heart attacks are definitely on the rise. And the predominance of the people having heart attacks are people who did take that. You know, we can't talk about that on YouTube because they they take they snatching channels for a reason. But anyway, you made a valid point. Uh, and I think everybody gets it. But OK, so when you are sitting up and somebody does something and it vexes your spirit it vexes your spirit because you're on a different frequency but in order to come back down and respond negatively you have to leave that frequency that vibration and come down and fire back so no matter what this guy did i'm not coming up from down here to come down and praise his death because that brings me in a place now where i'm exposed to a whole bunch of negativity that can have an impact on me second of all like i said <clears throat> Not that I've ever thought lightly of a heart attack, but from a person who had five and I did not get, and I had my five before uh, that was a jab. So uh, this was me not taking care of myself, me working too hard and stressing, me not eating right, uh, me not doing what I had done the whole life. As a matter of fact, if I hadn't have been an athlete and active young in my life, the heart attacks would have killed me. It was that my heart was strong. Uh, I had an athlete's heart, so it withstood the blockage and fought hard enough for me to get to the hospital. But just saying, I would never ever sit up and think, okay, 
you know, I mean, we really have to really search ourselves and see where we at. Uh, because pain will make you do some things. Pain will take you to a place that will literally perpetuate more pain. And you'll, you won't know where it's coming from because you don't understand the spiritual nature of things. And so you're, you're sitting down and you you have a chance to be here. You can see every morning I wake up. For those of you who know what I'm going through right now, I talked about it last week. Um, and you guys showed mad love to me. Thank you. Uh, I'm not talking about it anymore right now, but you know, obviously that's not something you just say, okay, in a few days, you're all right. You, you're dealing with it. You're, you, you're, you're coping with it. You're finding your way. But uh, the one thing that I can tell you is I wake up every morning, despite that. And I say, thank you. First thing in my mouth, out of my mouth is thank you. And then I find reasons to be grateful. Why? Because it immediately puts me at 500 heights or higher. It gives me a vibration that starts to draw things positively that towards me. I also believe and have taught for years that gratitude is the gateway to abundance. You don't get abundance by complaining. You don't get abundance by attacking. You get abundance by raising your, 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 your level of awareness, your mindset, your state of mind, and you start moving in a space where it's rare because everybody's down here whining, complaining, attacking, and doing all of that. So when I see people I love, and I love you because I see myself in every last one of you, no matter where you're at, no matter how uh, elevated and pristine you are, or how ratchet you may behave, a gangster and, and you may behave, I see me in you. I've never seen myself being better than anybody. I've never seen myself uh, being uh, separate from my people, no matter where they're at. Now, I may have a problem with your behavior. And if I have a problem with your behavior, I will come to you respectfully and I will tell you. And if you are willing to listen, I will work with you. And if you're not, I will leave you in your space. But I, I'm not going to demean you. I'm not going to because, see, there was a time I needed somebody to speak into my ear. There was a time I needed somebody to pull me to the side and, 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 and break it off for, uh, to me in a way that I understood it and show enough love and concern to say, hey, there's too much potential inside of you to be where you're at, to be moving how you're moving, to be thinking how you're thinking. You're going to let life steal your gift. And so who am I? to think I'm better than anybody because I've done something. That's why I didn't agree with the whole high value men thing. Excuse me. That's why I didn't agree, agree with that because I think high value is a state of being beyond anything that you can acquire. So you can acquire money. It doesn't take character to acquire money. It doesn't take integrity to acquire money. It doesn't take any of it. But to be able to be a positive impact consistently in the lives of people, it requires character. And character has to have integrity. And, and, and people used to use the words interchangeable. I said, no, they're synonymous, but they're not interchangeable. See, character is the set of values that you hold. It's what you believe you should be doing and what you believe you shouldn't be doing. And that's your character. Your integrity is the strength of your character. See, the integrity says, OK, this is your character. Now, what happens when things get rough and, 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 and you're trying to figure it out? How strong are your values? Do you stick to your values when you hurt? In other words, it's easy for me to sit up and talk about uh, how you handle a person when you know, everything is going right with that person. But when that person wrongs you and now you got to sit up and still move in a public space, now your character is being tested and your integrity and your integrity will show. How do you address that person? How do you talk about that person? How do you refer to that person? Are you trying to drag them through the mud? Are you trying to sit up there and throw them under the bus? Or are you still speaking of them highly, even though they haven't treated you well? 
See, and, and the thing is, this doesn't mean sit around and get kicked by anybody, let anybody. It means that that's the way you carry yourself to maintain yourself. Because the moment that someone else can bring you somewhere out of where you want to be, you're not in control of your life. The moment that someone can do something and immediately shift your emotions, shift the way you feel, shift the way you respond, take you from a place that's literally blessing, healing and making you whole and bring you to a place that's going to rip you apart. You're not in control of your life. That's why. I had my disagreements with Kevin Samuels. I didn't hate him. I just didn't like what he stood for and how he moved. Uh, I know based off of what I saw, that was a space for him. And that told me, you don't get that big without there being enough people who believe in what you're doing. And you gotta ask yourself, why? Why are there that many men that feel that strongly and are okay with women being talked to in a very derogatory manner? Why? Where did we go wrong? See, it's the problem isn't just with them, it's with what happened to them. Because see, nobody just comes to a point where they hate somebody. Normally it starts with self-hatred and we have to ask ourselves, where does the self-hatred come from? Why are so many women traveling outside of the country for BBL surgery? when black women are the most unbelievably gorgeous and awesome creatures that you can imagine, regardless of their shape and their size, they're just phenomenal. But there's this idea being placed out there and because we don't know who we are, we're looking to be defined by something else and someone else and it is killing us. Black men, they told us that we are high value because we got the bag. So all we care about is getting the bag. We may not be good fathers. We may not be good husbands. We may not be good protectors of the community. We may not be in, in any way blessing and healing anything, but we got the bag. And then black women, because we got the bag, here you come. We can't, we, we can't, we can't even be good protectors, but we got the bag. The only thing we can provide is a space and, and, and material things because we got the bag, but we can't provide a spiritual covering. We can't provide mental covering. We can't provide physical covering. We can't provide advice and teaching. We can't provide leadership. We can't provide a good, strong environment of feeling safe and protected. You don't even know how to lean into us because the only thing we know is how to get the bag. See, we got lost because we didn't know who we were. We shouldn't be celebrating the death of this black man. We should be contemplating the question of why he was so popular. And we must do it without the proclivity or inclination to dismiss the ones who made him popular. See, we got to learn how to move with one another, even when we don't dis when we don't agree with one another, to find out why we are where we're at, why we're doing what we're doing and what needs to be done. We are hurting people. We are hurting people. The problem is most of us don't know why. A lot of us have misplaced anger. One of the things that I have to do in my line of work is I have to have a judgment-free zone that my clients can step into and be honest with me. And, in, and when they tell me about something that they've done or that they're doing or that they're thinking about doing, my first inclination isn't to go, what the hell were you doing? What were you thinking? My, my question is to ask, why? What happened? 
And I have to get to the bottom of that. And very rarely is it something that's sitting right there. It's something that normally has happened a while ago. For many, a, a, a majority, it happened during childhood. And, and there was no healing. There was no, 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 no healing and growth. And what ends up happening is it festers. It never heals, it festers. It scabs, it scars, but it never really truly heals. And so now it's influencing movements and in, in, in interfering in experiences. And it's creating a new reality that's a reflection of what happened and that there hasn't been healing. And so we, got, we, got, we, we have to heal. And, and a big part of what I do with people who are suffering from some form of trauma, wherever it happened, is say, we got to heal. I know that person did that to you. But the more you focus on what they did and the less you focus on where you want to be and what you're going to do with your life, the more power you still have, you've given that person. And they may have actually changed. They may have actually looked up and said, man, I'm not getting anywhere with this and become a new person. And you're still living in the pain of a person that doesn't exist anymore. Now, we, 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 we can talk about, I heard somebody say that, you know, Kevin sold his soul for fame. Uh, I don't know where he rose from. I know he rose real quick. I know that he came out. And I think that what he did is he saw a market. There are a bunch of markets. If I really was about the bag, I wouldn't be doing this. I am a very analytical person. I see so many spaces out there that if I came in any of those spaces with the knowledge I have and I came with an edge and I made an enemy out of somebody that a bunch of people wanted to see be an enemy, I could make a whole bunch of money. I could have a whole bunch of subscribers. I could have a whole bunch of followers. I have a whole bunch of people signing up to be clients, but I'll be creating a darkness that I don't believe in. See, that's that integrity that was telling me about. I'm going for the bag, but I'm going for the bag, but the bag is a small portion of what I'm going for. I'm going for healing a nation. I'm going for healing young children. I'm going for creating a space where young black children come into healthy whole households. I'm going for a space where we rear up a generation that understands the importance of two parents rearing children together and perpetuating their values, interests, and principles uh, through the inculcation of those principles at early ages. We're trying to teach people in their 30s about black group, black group economics and, and all the other stuff that we talk about and wondering why we are not getting through because they didn't have that in the home. You're trying to teach somebody that's had 20, 30 years of doing it wrong the right way, and they're bucking you every way possible because that's their paradigm. We got to go in. That's what black men lead is about. Properly socializing young black males in the manhood. In, 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 into manhood that says ownership is important. That's saying holistic health and holistic uh, awareness and education. In other words, not just the attainment of academic skills, uh, to teach them that their masculinity and strength isn't to dominate a woman, but to cover her. To teach them that they are a source of power, but they can never diminish the importance and the uh, and, and the value of the woman. Because see, we will never get any higher than our woman spiritually lift us, and we will never get any further than our men physically lead us. And we are not working together. And we've got to teach this to them at an early age. That's what Black Men Lead is all about. That's what I created that rite of passage program for. It needs to be universal. But what we do. We find a place of un uncommonality where we don't have anything in common and we wage war. The gender war in the black community is full fledged and it's growing. It's not it's not diminishing. The fire isn't being put out. People are study fanning the flames. And yes, Kevin Samuels is one of them. I don't I don't have a desire to fan the flames. I have a desire to be honest. And when I'm honest, I can look on both sides and say we've got work to do. Why are we sitting here and doing what we're doing when there's work to do? I, I, I'm about putting in the work. But it troubles me that we are dark enough. This Here's it. If somebody that I don't like passes away, 
at the very worst, I say nothing. Or I might say, hey, man, rest in peace. The thing is, who he is is who he is or who he was. But I'm also certain that there are people connected to him that are good people that are hurting right now. I think about them. You know, I'm pretty sure there's people in this panel saying, man, what you doing? I know a, a number of his uh, frat brothers. Matter of fact, I've interviewed a couple of them. One of them I'm, I'm, I'm close friends with, Dr. Blanchard. And we've had words about what he does, but I've also had one of his frat brothers who a lot of his stuff comes from. The guy who uh, is the little date doctor. The, the, you know, the whole hits thing is kind of connected to this brother. And we had him on. And he talked about it. But all I'm saying is my soul is my soul. And I think I'm, a, I'm, I'm sort of going to say this and I'm going to leave it here. My soul is my soul. I'm not going to allow anybody to stir up my soul in a way that it robs me of who I am. And who I am is somebody that gets no joy out of someone else's death. So even when the person that gets them under my skin the most is hurting, that's for them to deal with and for me to stay out of. Now, if you're coming directly for me, you're going to get the smoke. I'm not a pushover. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't spend my time wishing bad on anybody. I don't spend my time celebrating the bad people are going through. That in no way helps me. It harms me. It puts me in a place. And the thing is, no, uh, you can't sell, say, save everybody. But I don't go through life uh, trying to figure out who should be saved and who shouldn't. I give myself to my work. Those that will be saved will be saved. Those that can't be saved will fall by the wayside. But sitting up and trying to sit up and look at somebody because of how I judge them or what I see. I've seen crackheads become millionaires. And I'm almost certain that almost anybody that was somebody that observed them when they were crackheads would have looked at them and said they weren't worth working with. They weren't worth helping. I've had people come in beat up and broken over ancestral relationships when they were children that are now working in the field of helping children deal with sexual uh, childhood sexual abuse. Who am I to determine who can be saved and who cannot be saved? Now, there's a time you look at somebody and you say, OK, I'm putting into you and you're not doing anything. Then you have to keep it moving. But I'm not going to spend my time trying to qualify somebody i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna put in my work i'm gonna do what i do and i'm going to have what i have based off of how i give and how i love now i've lived it i can tell you that and i've very rarely seen anything where see some people are so focused on what can't happen that they never actually get anything done there are people who are so focused on what can't be done that they never get anything done. Uh, there's an ongoing joke in my inner circle that has been going on for probably close to 30 years, literally. And every time new people come in, the old people kind of pull them to the side and tell them. And the joke is a joke, but it's true. The joke is the quickest way to get pushed out of this circle is to say, be realistic. I can't stand that term because when someone is saying something that they're trying to do and your response is that's not realistic or you need to be realistic, what you're saying is I have a limiting belief about what you're talking about and I'm trying to force you into my space of believing or not believing and I am uh, sitting up and pushing that upon you. I don't allow that to be said in my circle. If you don't believe in what I'm trying to do or you don't believe in what someone else in my circle is trying to do, you keep it to yourself. Because what you're going to find out if you hang around long enough is what you thought couldn't happen can. I've been spending my life doing what people say it couldn't be done. So the idea of that, be careful of what you speak. 
Your self-talk is the program that your mind and your brain will run. And that brain and that mind is the most powerful force on this planet. If you tell it it's going to fail, it'll fail. If you tell it it's going to succeed, it'll succeed. It doesn't mean you're not going to run into bumps and bruises and, and, and disappointments. You're not going to experience the delay. You're not going to have setbacks. You're not going to fall. Hell, I'm going through hell right now. But what I know because of my experience is that I'm not going to stay here. That what I'm experiencing now is actually making me stronger. It's refining me for a next, another phase and step in my life that I haven't even touched, come close to touching or scraping the pinnacle of what I'm going to do. So that's where I'm at. That's why I love working with people. That's why I have the clientele I have. So those who are not going to make it won't be because I looked at them and told them they couldn't. It's going to be because they, they decided they wouldn't. But anybody that tries to reach out to me, you know, I'm going to do the best I can. And with that said, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. And as I said at the beginning of this, we need your support with the work we're doing in Black Men Lead. Go in the description box, click on the link, show some love. If you want to look at what we do, there's plenty of videos. Go to the site of the Odyssey Project 21.top and check out the work we're doing, the Blueprint for Black Improvement, which was literally co-signed by Dr. Claude Anderson. Uh, look at uh, the Black Code of Conduct. And you'll see where I'm talking about. There's a way you treat one another that we really got to learn that comes from self-love. That comes from self-love. That's how even when somebody's taking a shot at me, you don't see me get all out of whack. Now, if you come real sideways to me, I'm from the hood. Don't let the, the dialect and the uh, vernacular fool you. I'm from the hood. You come sideways. You can't get the smoke. You, I mean, and, and then it's going to be real short. I'm going to get you and then I'm going to keep moving because I'm not like going to let you keep me there. But you, you, you're you going to respect me. You can disagree with me all you want to. I don't want a bunch of yes men and yes women around me. I want thinkers. So I don't have a problem with anybody disagreeing, but you're not going to disrespect me. Uh, but other than that, hey, we can make things happen by learning from one another. I learn a lot just by doing what I do. And on that note, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for stopping in. Thank you guys for showing love. We've got to do better. We've got to be better. Uh, go go into that description box. Click the link. Show some love. Also, for those of you who love Cash App, the, the organization's Cash App handle is in there as well. Show some love. Again, uh, rest in peace to Kevin Samuels. Love and condolences to his family and his loved ones. Let's find a way to disagree without being violently and disrespectfully disagreeable. On that note, I'm out of here.